In this video with the Anking, I'm going to go over the new best Anki settings. Um, and we're going to talk about how the new FSRS algorithm stacks up to Anki's original Super Memo 2 algorithm and what you need to know about that. Um, this was introduced in Anki 23.10. The FSRS is now uh, integrated into it. You can turn it on. Uh, there's also image occlusion is natively added. So if you have Anki iOS, you can actually add it from your iOS app, which is cool too. You can make image occlusion cards. But the main thing here is the FSRS algorithm. And then you'll notice the numbering has changed. It's now representing uh, year and month just to help you understand like when there's a larger jump, uh, there may be some add-on breaks. I'm using 23.10.1, which has some fixes. There are still some add-ons that aren't working, for, but for the most part things are working and we're still working to try and update public add-ons so there's a link in the description if you want to follow along on which add-ons are not working great uh, the outline for this video will be a little bit longer and I apologize but I also did a ton of research more than I've ever done before and I wanted this to be a very evidence-based video so there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to discuss here you can skip ahead you can jump around if you really want to so I made this video initially to talk about the recommended settings in Anki. It was kind of based off of the default and my subjective experience and understanding. Um, it, it, I, th I still think they're really good. They worked really well for me when I was studying for the medical board exams. Uh, but that's all about to change. Uh, there's a lot of really cool, interesting things. So spaced repetition, you're taking the advantage of using active recall with flashcards and we're studying it in a spaced repetition manner. Uh, intervals are going to get longer over time as long as we're getting things correctly uh, because you'll remember it more the more you've reviewed it. Um, but in order to compare Anki's default to the new FSRS, we need to understand what Anki's doing. Uh, so Anki's using Super Memo 2, which was developed by Piotr Wozniak. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Super Memo is a learning software. Uh, the Super Memo 0 was a pen and paper version, essentially doubling the intervals. And then Super Memo 2 was released in 1987. Um, the latest algorithm on Super Memo is Super Memo 18. Uh, you may ask why is Anki not using that? It's a prior, uh, pr pr proprietary um, algorithm. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, spaced repetition softwares out there that are using Super Memo 2 because it's out there and you can use it. Um, so it's actually used outside of Anki as well. I think Anki has one of the better implementations of it though. Um, so the Anki algorithm is based off which button you're going to push. Um, FSRS is going to do the same thing. There's a different equation depending on what you do. Um, so if you, they're all going to take into account the interval. So how long it's been since you saw that card. And then depending on which button you push, it's going to change the ease. Uh, so if you get it wrong, the ease goes down. If you're getting it uh, right, it actually stays the same if you hit good or increases if you do easy. And you'll see that the ease affects if you hit good or easy. Um, so it's going to be multiplied by a longer one if, if or a longer or a larger ease if you've been put hitting easy more often if you've hit harder again you'll see the card more often so super memo zero like i said was kind of just doubling the intervals whereas super memo two introduced this ease factor to kind of separate out the things that are more difficult and see them more often and um, the easy things you see less often so all of these are multiplied by an interval modifier which most of you have probably not done anything to because it's a hundred percent but there is this fancy algorithm you can do here where you can say i'm at 90 percent retention i want to get to 85 5%, I'm going to do this wild equation and change my interval modifier to 154%. Now that's going to multiply every card by 154%, which means you won't get things right as often. You know, it'll be 85% instead of 90%, uh, but theoretically, maybe you'll have a lower card burden and be able to spend less time reviewing. Okay, so there's two components of memory here. There's memory retrievability, which is how likely you are, the probability you, you can recall that card at any given point in time. Um, we talk about retention a lot, which is measured. That's after you've done it. Retrievability is what we're predicting. Uh, memory stability is the time that's required for that retrievability to de uh, decrease from 100% to 90% or whatever you decide it to be. So here's a, a good I think example of this. So the retrievability right when you study something is 100%. You are going to recall it 100% of the time. And the retrievability as we head to zero, the bottom of this graph is 0.2, but as we head that way, it will eventually go to 0%. You will forget something if you never review it again. Um, and that's just the way our memory works. Now, stability, depending on what type of information we're learning, can be different. So you can see the blue line here, the stability is two days for it to decrease to 90%, uh, whereas orange is four days and green is eight days. Now, you also notice this is a negative exponential equation, so it's dropping down. We forget things faster at first, and then it kind of slows down a little bit. 
Okay, but there's also a third component of memory, which is difficulty. And Anki's Ease is kind of trying to do this, but it's a, it's not technically a difficulty factor when you look at the details. Um, but this is the inherent complexity associated with a particular memory. So it's going to affect how the stability changes as you're reviewing things. If something is more difficult, then it, the stability is going to have slower growth, which makes sense. Uh, that memory is not going to be as stable because it's a more difficult or more complex thing. Okay. Back to Anki's algorithm here. So the pros and cons of the Super Memo 2 algorithm. The pros, it's tried and tested. Like I mentioned, it's used all over the place. It's very simple. It's very easy to understand, which makes it more predictable and easier to manipulate. Um, I do like this, especially, for example, when I was a medical student, I had really busy days on Wednesday, so I wanted to do most of my reviews on Thursday and Friday. It was more predictable. I knew that when I studied cards, I would study them again the next day and then three days after that. So I can kind of predict my schedule. Now there are ways to manipulate things. There are add-ons that help you manipulate things. Um, but I feel like the Super Memo 2 algorithm is very simple and that's a, a pro for that. Now the cons, it doesn't really attempt to predict the retrievability. It doesn't really have a well-defined notion of stability either. So as I showed you, you can look at what your retention is after the fact, and then you can go and try and modify it to get to a certain retention, but it's not really trying to predict the retrievability. Um, it's also outdated. As I mentioned, the Super Memo 2, whereas 18 has already been released. So there's a lot of new data, new information, better th ways to do things. It's also not as good at determining the optimal interval length. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, there's also the component of ease hell. If you noticed that um, the again and hard buttons both decrease the ease and only the easy button increases the ease. So if you hit again or hard on something a lot initially because it's more complicated, but then it becomes easier over time, it's kind of difficult to raise that ease without hit, unless you're hitting the easy button, which sometimes doesn't always work. So people sometimes will fall into the trap of hitting again and hard too often and get into ease hell where they're reviewing cards way too frequently uh, than they need to and they can't necessarily stop it. So uh, that's one of the cons here. Now the Free Spaced Repetition Scheduler, or FSRS, is based on the Difficulty Stability Retrievability Model, which is similar to Super Memo 17 and 18. Those three values collectively are the memory state, and every time a user reviews a flashcard or a fact, the memory state's going to change. So those values will change, um, unless it's a same-day review, and things don't change. We'll talk about that later. Um, but this was created by Jarrett Yeh. And he published this paper that essentially introduced this method. Um, you can read it. I'll link it in the description so you can read it if you want to. I'll also link this blog post that he made, which is really, really cool. Um, but it talks about how this was essentially developed. Uh, now, very quickly and briefly, he, in 2017, started using Anki in high school and found it was very effective. And then he started publishing and and tutorials for Chinese students. And then he started looking into spaced repetition theory and reading Piotr Wozniak's material and things like that. He was translating that into Chinese. And then he did an internship at my memo where he studied billions of spaced repetition logs, uh, which is really cool. So then he introduced this method based off of the things that he had learned and published it on an Anki subreddit where somebody commented and said, you know, that's really cool, but nobody ever implements it. So, you know, it's not really helpful as an Anki user if I can't use it. Well, that motivated him being the amazing person that he is to integrate it into Anki. And with Damien's help, Damien uh, owns Anki. They've now integrated into Anki. And I imagine things will continue to improve, which is really cool. Okay, so uh, to understand this, I want to show you essentially what is being done and some information that will show you how this compares. So uh, a spaced repetition algorithm needs to predict the probability of recalling a card at a certain time. And that's going to be given its reviews history, you know, if it's a more difficult card and you've hit again on it more often and things like that. Okay, so here's a graph and I'll show you. So on the x-axis here is the predicted retrievability and then over here is the actual retrievability. So the perfect uh, spaced repetition algorithm would be the orange line. If it predicts 60% and you get it right 60% of the time, then that's a perfect spaced repetition algorithm. Now the goal is to get as close as we possibly can. Um, now you'll notice that it is pretty accurate, appears a little wavy over here, um, but uh, a lot of these are very, you know, there's a high retention here. So uh, if we zoom in here, here, you'll see within that range of the higher retention, it's actually really, really darn good at predicting things, uh, which is awesome. Now I'll go over this later, but we're going to use this orange line and the blue values to kind of calculate how good this algorithm is compared to Super Memo 2. 
Now let's look at the Super Memo 2 algorithm. Uh, for the same collection here, you can see there's the orange line, there's the blue line. Uh, it doesn't really line up at all. So um, it, it, when it's predicting that you will get things right 60% of the time, you're actually getting them right 95% of the time, which is not good. That means that you're reviewing things more often than you need to to retain or to have that retention that you want. All right, so um, FSRS has these parameters like this, and it takes into account the first review of the day. I'm going to show you uh, the complicated part, and then I'm going to simplify it. So basically what it's doing behind the scenes is a bunch of these really complicated equations using these values, and it looks like this. So it uses 17 separate values. I initially was like, I'm going to learn what these are so I can teach you all how this works. I would just ignore this, honestly. Um, you don't need to know any of this. This is more of that, and it gets even more complicated. <laughs> Look at this equation here and how complicated that is. It's just not worth trying to understand that. Here's the simple version if I boil it down for you. Um, so when it's the first Anki review, it's going to set the initial stability of that card based on the grade. And the stability is estimated during the optimization. That's something I haven't mentioned yet. But there's the default parameters, the 17 uh, values of uh, 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 sorry of FSRS. Now, if you've already done at least a thousand reviews, it will optimize and will look at your reviews, how you're doing things, and it will change those parameters to better match you. So it individualizes it to the content that you're using, which is amazing. So the stability is estimated during that optimization, and the initial stability is going to be based off of one of those parameters. It's all the same, same thing is going to happen with the difficulty, and it's going to schedule the next review based off that stability and your desired retrievability. So you get to select how what you want you want 90 percent retention you want 80 percent retention you actually get to select that and then it will do it and it will look over time you can continue to optimize every single month if you want to and it will actually continue to improve um, it, it's really cool okay if it's not the first review this gets a little more complicated so i won't go too detailed into it but it's going to calculate the projected retrievability um, that's based off the time and the stability now, this is really cool because it actually works even if you're doing it too early or too late uh, or, you know, it's overdue. And then it's also going to calculate the difficulty. You'll get a new difficulty. And then using all of those, it's going to estimate a new stability. And remember, if something's more difficult, the stability is going to grow slower. Um, and stability is going to increase as long as you or, or stay the same as long as you're getting things correct. But it's going to decrease if you forget it or you hit again. Uh, now, this is different, if you remember, from Anki, if you hit hard, it would actually decrease the ease, whereas with FSRS, the stability is going to stay the same or increase when you hit hard, so hard is, uh, is a little bit different, and that's important. If you've hit hard a ton, FSRS uh, may not work very well for you. Okay, and then the next review is going to be scheduled based off of the uh, you know stability and desired retrievability, similar to the initial review. All right, so how does this stack up? Now remember this graph, and I talked about the orange line and the blue line. The average or the difference between the blue line and the orange line is the RMSE. It's a, uh, a measure of how much the blue line deviates from the orange line. So the lower the value, the better. You want it to match up with the orange line. Jarrett, yeah, who created this, he got a ton of Anki collections. I think he had over 70 and compared them using different algorithms. So HLR here, this is one that's used for Duolingo. Here's Super Memo 2. You can see that it value, or it's 20%. So a lot of the time it's kind of deviating from that orange line. And then FSR three and four has continued to improve and this is a neural network designed for time series predictions um, and you can tell it's even better than that which is really cool okay the second graphic is super memo uh, data that he got from people who were using super memo and they gave him his collections and you can see the FSRS is even improving compared to Super Memo 17. So that's really, really cool. Uh, basically, FSRS is very, very good at predicting that retrievability uh, and getting you the retention that you said that you want to get. Okay, so kind of fascinating. You're like, yeah, that's cool, but um, give me the real details. Like, how is this going to affect me? Well, I took a deck of mine and actual information. I optimized it to my deck. I used the Anki algorithm and I used the FSRS algorithm to look at how many reviews per day over a year if I were to complete a deck of about, I want to say it's about 8,000 cards with a retention rate of 90%. And you can see here that I would be doing about 20 to 30% less reviews per day, which is incredible. For the same retention, I'm going to remember things 90% of the time. 
I would be uh, doing significantly less cards. And um, if we go look at the next one here, this is how much time I'm spending on it. You can see I would save five to 10 minutes a day. Now, one thing I will point out is uh, that, that it does take a little bit of time before those start to separate. So you will need to use FSRS for a little bit of time before you start to notice a significant difference. All right. The free spaced repetition algorithm. So, uh, or scheduler, sorry. The default parameters are like this. This is something I think is really, really cool. So I have different parameters for different decks. I have a Chinese deck, I have a dermatology deck and a medicine deck, and I've optimized it to all of them. And you can see the parameters are different for each of those decks. So don't go copy these. This is based off of me, my history, and how easy that is for me. So I, I was a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Taiwan for two years. I was there on the street speaking Chinese. I'm quite fluent. I have a really good foundation of that, and I'm just trying to review it and learn a little bit more. So my parameters for that are going to be a little bit different than dermatology, where it's all brand new material. It's very difficult. There's random things, facts that I have to memorize. Uh, so it's going to be different. And this, just as an example to show you how different this can be, these are just brand new flashcards in each of the decks. So in Chinese, you'll notice that my good interval here is two days, whereas easy is seven. And then this is my uh, dermatology deck. So the good is one and the easy is 15 days. And then this is my medical deck. So the good would be two and the easy would be 10 days, which is kind of interesting uh, just to see the difference. And it, so it's optimized based off of my reviews and individualizing it for me. All right, so the pros and cons of this. This is really getting down to the nitty gritty, the stuff that you wanted to know. It is better at predicting the, uh, you know, the retrievability of a card, the probability that you will recall a card. It's going to have better intervals. It may feel a little bit longer to you, but like I showed in a past one, Super Memo 2 may actually have you reviewing cards too frequently. Um, it's going to lead to less reviews, like I showed you, which means less time. It's also individualized, and you can choose the desired retention. So I could say with Chinese, I only want to remember 80%, whereas Dermatology, I want to remember 95%. And you can tweak that for different decks. And it's also much better at scheduling cards that have been reviewed like out of the normal schedule. So you reviewed them too early or they were overdue. It's integrated into Anki, Anki Mobile, and Anki Droid. The Anki Droid one is in alpha as of the date that I'm creating this video. I imagine eventually it will be in the official one. Okay, the cons is it requires accurate reviews. So like I mentioned, if you are hitting hard, if you're hitting hard, but you actually forgot it, um, and you should have hit again. So if you're using the buttons inappropriately, FSRS will not work for you. Um, the intervals will be way too long. It will be really confusing. Uh, so it, it won't work if you've done that. It's very difficult to understand the inner workings. Like I mentioned, the algorithm is just super complicated and not worth uh, trying to understand. You kind of just have to trust that it's working. Uh, you may have a high review load early on. So if you, you can actually switch to FSRS, as I'll show you, and reschedule cards on the switch, which may mean that you'll have more cards uh, initially. Um, but you can actually slowly ease into it, which is nice. The next con is that there's no learning phase, and I didn't mention this earlier. Anki has a learning phase, so whenever it's learning phase, it doesn't affect the ease. Once it's graduated, it does. So the first day that I'm reviewing a card and the next day that I'm reviewing a card doesn't affect the ease. Whereas with free rep, uh, with FSRS, the very first review will affect the future of it. The stability and the difficulty will be different based off the very first review of that card. And FSRS is also a little bit different in that it only takes into account the first review of the day and it won't take into account any uh, other reviews. So you could get it wrong 50 times in one day, it doesn't matter. But uh, one con that I, I mentioned kind of along the lines with this learning phase, sometimes I would get something wrong and then forget to do my reviews again that day, so I'd do reviews the next day. Well, in that case, it would actually be uh, harmful uh, to use FSRS over um, Anki because in Anki it would be in the learning phase. So it wouldn't matter if I waited until the next day to review it again. Whereas with FSRS, that would now count as hitting again twice because it was two days in a row. So this is just little things to consider. I don't think it will affect a large amount of your cards. Uh, there's also less experience with this. So just overall, it's hard to troubleshoot and things like that. But um, you can reach out on the Anki subreddit or the Anki forums. Uh, there's some people that are very helpful. My personal experience with it is that has been, has been really helpful. So I initially used to hit the buttons and I would kind of look and be like, well, hard is seven days and good is 20 and easy is 35. And I feel like maybe I could get it right in 20 days. 
and I kind of use that to judge. Whereas with FSRS, I just click the buttons, you know, hard, easy, or good, depending on how I feel like it was. And I trust that FSRS is going to schedule it out so that I will get it right 90% of the time. And I'm going to re optimize. So if things aren't working perfectly, like a month later, I can optimize it again. It will look at my review schedules, it will change the parameters. It's really cool. So it's dynamic, it's individualized. Um, and I feel like overall, it has been very helpful. So I want to show you now how to enable FSRS and go through all of the things that you need to know. All right, to turn on FSRS, what you're gonna do is go into the settings. So here's the deck I'm currently studying. I'm gonna go into the options group and it's gonna pull up all the settings here. Now, um, this is what I'm using with Super Memo 2. So this is what my uh, settings are right now, okay? And I'm gonna scroll down here to advanced and here's the FSRS button. Now, it's really cool. If you don't know what any of these things are as you're looking through them, you can actually click and it will pull up what that means. Um, now, the FSRS thing here, when I toggle this on, it's not just for this options group. It's going to be for everything that is going to turn on FSRS. So I'm going to click that button and it's going to say make sure everything's updated. But it's also going to add up a couple little things here and change some stuff. So what I'm going to do is come up here and you really don't want learning steps uh, more than one. You can if you really want to, but like with this deck, like I showed you, you know, it was saying that I could go to two days with new material. So I'm gonna delete that one. You can leave it if you really want to, but I would not recommend anything more than doing one day. So I would do uh, a learning step here. That's going to be your again button. I'd recommend that's anywhere from like five to 30 minutes or so, uh, because that's kind of your short term memory. We're actually like looking to do more research into that and stuff. I'm hoping that Jared, yeah, and the people who have been working on that will come up with a little more information to support that. But um, we're gonna do 10 minutes and then one day. So I personally deleted that. You can set all these other things to whatever you want. Come back down here and set your maximum interval. I'm gonna show you some graphs and stuff of what I recommend later for that. Um, but here's what you need to do. My desired retention. So how much do I want to, uh, how many cards do I wanna do and things like that. So if I change this to like 95, then it would say a 100 day interval will become 47 days. So it's gonna make me review things quite a bit more frequently. Whereas if I set it to 85, then a 100 day interval would be 159 days. So it's gonna make it so that I get to space things out even more. All right, so I'm gonna do 90. Um, the Super Memo 2 retention here, you don't really need to use unless you have deleted a lot of content. Um, so you can read this here, which kind of talks about that. Um, and then here's the parameters. Now I've already optimized this, but essentially what you're gonna do, so it will be default, I'm gonna optimize. And what it's gonna do is optimize based off of this preset of any deck that's using the Derm Key preset. Now you could change this search and you could add it to like anything like deck and then whatever the name of the deck is or based off of a certain tag or whatever you want. You can change this, but I would probably leave it like this, click optimize. It's gonna optimize these values. You'll notice it changed the FSRS parameters. And then I can click evaluate and it's gonna show me that RMSE, which is what we talked about previously, you know, how far the blue line is from the orange line. And you can see it's pretty low. So you want a lower number is better. And you can see how this goes, uh, you know, how it improves over time. Now you can also reschedule cards on change. So if I click save, you'll notice it's gonna update all of my cards because I just uh, changed a whole bunch of stuff. And then once it updates all of those cards, you notice nothing Nothing changes, I don't have any new cards to do or anything like that. Um, but if I come back in here and I say I want you to reschedule my cards based on change, then it can make it so that you have a lot of cards due all of a sudden. I'll click save, we'll see what happens. Uh, in this case, it's not going to make it, probably because I don't have a ton of cards. Um, but anyway, that's just something to be aware of with that. Now you can also, this is experimental, you can play around with this and compute the optimal retention. Um, so I had, I, my deck is about 10,000. I wanted to do it in about, you know, 365 days. How much do I want to study every day? I could compute and say, what is the retention that it thinks I need to do to be the most efficient? So it's going to say, wow, I really only need to do 79%, which would be really cool. It would space my cards out quite a bit. Let me click save here. Um, if you go into the stats, you'll see this is actually really cool. If I click all history, there are new statistics things here. It's gonna show you stability, difficulty, like where the difficulty is of my cards. Um, and let's see, that's the review intervals, retrievability here. So you can see my average retrievability is 81% um, based off of this. Uh, now you can also 
you know, I could base it just off of the deck and you can see my average retrievability for the dermatology deck is 91%. So it's kind of cool. You can mess around with this. Uh, the statistics are pretty sweet. Uh, there's a couple other things like I mentioned with the max interval and a couple uh, like the learning steps and things like that that I'd like to address a little bit more. Uh, so we'll go into that. All right, last few things that I think are really important as you're deciding which settings you want to choose. Uh, do you need to use all four buttons? This is a really common question. I know there's a lot of people that just want to get rid of hard and easy and just use again and good because it's easier to do that. Well, there was an analysis of the FSRS data sets, uh, the data sets that were used to create that. And using two buttons versus four buttons did not affect the accuracy of FSRS. However, I still think that we need to do a little more research into this. We need more data sets. And I would predict that using more buttons would lead to more accuracy. Super Memo, for example, has six buttons. So I think, and part of this is, you know, if something is more difficult, but not you're not getting it wrong, you'd want it to be hard. And if it's easier, you'd want it to be easy. And that's going to space your material out a little better so that you're reviewing the more difficult stuff more frequently which is what you want you don't you know you want to keep the easy stuff in there but you don't want it to have to add to the workload you need to do just something to keep in mind as you're using these the other thing here if you you know remember FSRS is optimizing based off what you've done with the last a thousand reviews or however many reviews you've done and so if you haven't used the easy and hard button at all, and all of a sudden you start using it, it may cause some issues. So, you know, you want to use it roughly the same as how you were before. I do recommend using it. And I think it is helpful and will lead to better uh, retention or more efficient studying. Okay. What retention should you use? This is a really good question. Workload is going to increase non-linearly as desired retention increases. So especially in this range here, you'll notice it's exponential. 95% uh, versus a 97% versus a 99% retention rate is going to add to the workload incredibly. Um, also, if you are down here, you set workload to 50%, it's actually going to be a higher workload than 70 to 80%. Reason being uh, that you're forgetting things so much that you have to study them more. Uh, so that's not good. Now, notice that 70 and 80 are roughly the same. Even 85 is not that much of a difference. Um, so I don't know that I would really recommend doing anything lower than 80. Uh, you know, if you really want to do 70, sure, go for it. But the, the workload is going to be the same with 80, but you'll remember more. I personally am going to stick in this 90 to 95 range, depending on what I'm studying. I feel like uh, 90 you know, is pretty safe, not going to increase your workload too much. How it feels better to be getting 9 out of 10 things right than 8 out of 10. Um, it certainly will make you a little happier. Anything above 95, you know, if you really want to do 97, you know, if you have a reason for doing that, sure. Uh, but otherwise, I would stay in this green area. All right, the maximum interval is also an interesting question, and we did some uh, data analysis to decide what is the best max interval. I previously have recommended like six months or a year, uh, and, and we compared this. So one year versus five years versus unlimited here. This is Super Memo 2, and you'll notice with one year, it starts to increase the workload quite a bit, but not until after a couple years of reviewing things. Uh, so within that first two years, it didn't increase a ton, uh, but you know, five and 10 years were not significantly different. The max interval for FSRS is, a, is similar in niche. Uh, so here's basically unlimited 10 years, five years, and one year. And this is a little more data to be a little more discreet of what's going on. So the average total time that you've spent on a card over its lifetime, and you can see that uh, if you set the max interval to one year, it is going to increase things a reasonable amount. And the uh, actual retention of FSRS is going to be higher than the desired retention if you're using a max interval of one year. Uh, but five and 10 years does not seem to uh, adjust it that much. So I think anywhere from one to five years is going to be probably a good max interval depending on what you personally are doing. All right, the FSRS helper add-on I've got to mention before we wrap up this video, it was also made by Jarrett Yeah, adds a couple really cool features. Some of these may potentially be integrated in Anki in the future. Um, so uh, there's the reschedule button, but I'm not going to do that because it's kind of within Anki anymore. But the next one is the advance and postpone. So you can study things uh, before they're actually due, or you can postpone them and study them later, which a lot of people like to do, depend, you know, you're going on vacation or whatever it may be. So it has those features in there, and it tries to do it in a way that minimizes the damage to long-term learning. Uh, there's also load balancing. So if you want to do the same number of cards every single day, it has that ability. It also has free days. So it will um, adjust the optimal intervals and make it so that it 
kind of moves it around the day that you want. You may still have some cards that you would have to review on that day, but significantly less. So you can choose like Sundays, for example. Um, we have an add-on that's currently on our VIP for beta testers. Uh, that's weekends and holidays. Probably functions a little bit better than this free days because it lets you choose specific holidays as well. Um, but you know, this is really a helpful tool, I think, for some people. Something to be aware of. And then disperse siblings. It can make it so that if there's two cards that are siblings, so if you have a close one and a close two, that's two cards with the same note. Um, this will make it so that it kind of spreads those two cards out to avoid the interference uh, because you're, you're seeing the same card. You know, if you see it one day and you see the other one the next day, that's going to add to it and maybe potentially affect your accuracy and recall ability. Um, anyway, so we'll go with these. These are my current settings. Please do not copy these. Please do not go on the internet and say, these are the Onking settings. If you got anything out of this video, it's that you can individualize your settings for whatever you're personally doing. This is what I'm using uh, if I don't have any add-ons on, and you'll see that this is how it works. Um, I, this is with FSRS uh, installed. I've got my max interval set to five years here. I've got my learning step set to 15 minutes. That's what I'm actually using right now, at least for my medicine decks. And then here's what it looks like with my add-on. So I've got the exam notifier add-on, which I think is really helpful. The straight reward add-on, I'm gonna keep installed just because it actually adjusts the ease. So the ease is still calculated. So if you wanna switch back to Super Memo 2 at some point. So I've got straight reward because I think it's a good add-on for that. But to be honest, it's really not useful anymore. Um, so that's those are my settings. Um, high quality cards are also really important in better memory. And uh, this, there's a Super Memo blog article that talks about the 20 rules of learning and how to create better flashcards. It's frequently shared on the Anki forums and subreddits. I made a free mini course. I just did this because I had some free time and really wanted to help. It goes over, it, it's totally free. There's no strings attached. Um, it goes over all of this stuff. I tried to make it a little more user friendly. It's in course format. It would probably take you maybe 15, 20 minutes to go through. Um, has some example flashcards and things like that that I think are helpful. Uh, and, and different note types and things like that. So I think this actually would contribute to having better learning as well. And then if you want some individualized help as you're trying to get started with this kind of stuff, we have our Onking VIP where you can beta test add-ons, like I mentioned, the weekends and holidays or other really cool add-ons. Um, you can, uh, or there's early release YouTube videos on there. We have email support. So you can email our team. We have people who are experts in Anki and will help you out. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one tutoring available with one of our team members. I will say um, most of us are also new to FSR as well so we may not be able to answer every question that you have but we certainly can at least help you get started um, we also do you know other things like personal statement reviewing I want to give a huge thank you uh, to Jerry yeah he helped out a ton there's also clarity and madness uh, or experitum I think I'm pronouncing that correctly and then there was another user on github that all contributed and helped to this uh, we've been talking about this for months and preparing research uh, this has been a big project to put this video together hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you enjoy the new FSRS algorithm